and welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Wednesday, February 29th of all days. And it's a snow day in northern Wisconsin for the Great Lakes. And I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain, and we're going to go to a conversation with Mark Trahant, who happens to be in Italy, but he's keeping in touch with what's happening on the political scene. And on Tuesday, with the Arizona and Michigan primaries, Mitt Romney pulled it off and continues his lead as the leading contender for the Republican nomination for the presidential candidacy. There you go, Mark. Thanks for joining with us, uh, Mark Trehunt. Uh, we want another update with your view on what has occurred here with the primaries. And uh, I'll let you introduce to the viewers out there where you are and what you're doing, but you're viewing this political process in the United States yet, aren't you? Right. Today I am in Bellagio, uh, Italy on Lake Como. I'm at the Rockefeller Center and I have a, a residency where I'm working on another book. Um, taking us to the primaries, um, the great chaotic Republican primary continues. Uh, Romney got two out of uh, that he had to win, one including his home state. And in some ways, it kind of seals the process for him, but nobody's happy about it. So we'll see what goes. Right. Uh, Romney, I'm, I'm just looking at uh, a couple things here. I'm going to quick look at the results from last last night that I lost for a minute. Uh, <coughs> Michigan, excuse me, Michigan was an absolute must for Romney. Tell me what you know about the history of the Romney family in Michigan. Well, his father was uh, governor there. His uh, mother ran for office and lost, um, but it was kind of the Romney grew up in uh, Mich Michigan. Uh, very important for him strategically as his home state one of his home states, along with Massachusetts and New Hampshire. Um, interesting thing was a big debate was the auto industry and the bailout. And uh, Rick Santorum actually ran a robocall, an automatic call to Democrats, advertising that Romney had been against the bailout of the auto industry, not saying that he also had been against it. <laughs> Uh, it's interesting because here we're getting into what some people to be considered dirty politics. And wasn't one of the reason that uh, Santorum ran that ad was because Michigan is an open primary where Democrats, no nobody on the ballot this year uh, opposing Obama uh, in an open primary, they can go in and uh, perhaps vote for the weakest uh, candidate, which uh, Santorum was uh, trying to get uh, liberal Democrats to vote for him, the right-wing conservative guy over on the edge. Romney just barely pulled it off. We're talking about three points in his hometown state. That still don't look very good, but... And he got less votes than he did last time. And I think one thing that's really important is Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio are big union industrial worker states. All of them had something to gain from the bailout of the industry, and uh, Romney was on the other side of that. That's interesting. Uh, Gingrich in uh, Michigan is 6.5%, in Arizona 16%. Uh, Ron Paul beat Gingrich in Michigan. Um, Tell me a little bit about the dynamics of that. Newt Gingrich, I heard last, uh, a couple of days ago, that one of his funders was considering giving him another $100 million to conduct his campaign. Did he earn it yesterday? <laughs> well, no. Um, I think what they're going for now is let's go to the convention and have a ruckus there. And uh, by extending it out, I mean, the thing is, Romney got probably twice as many delegates as Santorum, but he's not getting enough to win. And so you break it three ways, and they'll keep going for a while, and it could go all the way to the convention, and then who knows what's going to happen. We've got Mitt Romney at 145 current delegates, Santorum at 82, Newt Gingrich 29, Ron Paul 18, and John Huntsman 2. 1,144 delegates are needed to win. Uh, is Romney on a roll, not so much to capture the nomination by just overtaking everyone? Or is this now a situation where it's a fight between Santorum and Romney for the delegates? And the question is, is where is Gingrich going to go with his small group? Well, I think everyone's going to wait till Super Tuesday 
and kind of see where that shakes out. Super Tuesday is really set up for Romney. Um, first of all, you have Virginia, which uh, they're calling a Brezhnev-style uh, primary because nobody's on the ballot except for Romney. <laughs> so he's guaranteed Virginia. If he loses he, Virginia, he's in big trouble. <laughs> right. He's also going to win Idaho, my home state. Mm -hmm. uh, strong LDS component. Um, it's just that's the way it's going to be. And uh, he, he also has Massachusetts coming up, <laughs> his other home state. So he's really set up well for Super Tuesday. And on Super Tuesday, are you? Do you know the number of uh, delegates that are coming through on that particular race? And that's going to be coming up on March sixth, isn't it? Right. I don't know the exact number, but it's a big lot. It's more than what we've had before. Here, I'll read them off real quick for people who are watching this: Alaska twenty-seven, Georgia seventy-six, Idaho thirty-two, Massachusetts forty-one, North Dakota twenty-eight. Uh, Ohio 66, Oklahoma 43, Tennessee 58, Vermont 17, Virginia 49, and Wyoming 29. So that's a lot of delegates. He could really take the lead. And a lot of those, I my understanding, are winner take all rather than divisionary primaries where right. you get a well, proportional. Virginia, 49 delegates right there. Winner take um, all. Yeah. This last week, we saw Santorum uh, go, well, he's always been way to the right, but he went to social issues. He's no longer yeah. talking about the economy. Tell me what your perspective is, is going on. All of a sudden, it's about college. You know, Obama is a snob because he would like everyone to have a college education, and there's some people who Santorum says would just as much prefer to be auto mechanics and laborers I at McDonald's, I guess. I don't think there's any other way to say it, but last week he pandered trying to get every vote he could, and it was um, really disgusting. Just four years, when he ran for the U.S. Senate in Pennsylvania, he talked about universal access for college. So this is a new issue for him to campaign against university education. And in a global economy, it's just nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. Well, uh, I'm, I'm looking at some uh, data on Republican candidates to say uh, uh, usually what they got to do is run to the right during the primary and then run back to the center. But some people are running right over the edge. They've gone so far to the right. Is it because the economy, uh, the stock market, unemployment is down? The consensus seems to be that people are feeling a little bit more warm and fuzzy. They're not up to the 97, 90 percent vote, but... 70 something percent feel confident that things seem to be going in the right direction. Does that mean that all of a sudden we don't start talking about jobs and rehabilitation of the economy and, and, and get into this social issue? Warfare, education, abortion, Bibles. Should God be in the White House with the president? I think he just felt that Michigan was a ripe audience for that social uh, message. And I don't, I think there are still so many jobs we need to create that giving up on that message is um, not very smart. Uh, Michigan, especially. I mean, it should be a key issue in Michigan. Unemployment rate's still high there. Um, but he just saw this real active conservative wing that he could go after and did so. Okay. What else do you see coming up on the pike here, perspective wise? What's on our horizon? A big one. Um, uh, today, uh, the senior senator from Maine decided to call it quits, Olympia Snow, um, a moderate Republican, well thought of by both Democrats and Republicans, very thoughtful. She said she'd had enough of the partisan, uh, real poisonous partisanship environment. She thought she could win re-election, but she's not going to do it. Um, this could be a huge pickup possibility for the Democrats. And more important for the Democrats, it could keep the Senate in their control. Indeed. Do you see any shift away from the politics of the Tea Party in the United States? It seemed like uh, the last time around, four years ago, was two years ago, midterm, uh, there was this whole herd running out there called Tea Party Republicans, and all of a sudden it seems to be there's a, a, a backlash going on. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I think we'll find out for sure when the special election hits in Wisconsin. <laughs> well, we like that. Uh, Governor Walker decided not to challenge the one million uh, signatures uh, as it goes through the process. And we'll know uh, about mid 
March, I think it's the 17th, that GAB will rule on the validity of those signatures. My understanding that there's going to be much more than 540,000. Only the third time in U.S. history that a governor would be recalled, uh, already pouring millions of dollars into commercials on the Walker side. Koch brothers, he went down to Texas, got a half a million dollar check because recall elections in Wisconsin are unregulated monies. Uh, Scott Walker, the governor here, can raise as much money, and he's raised this, something like $17 million all over the country outside of the state of Wisconsin. So money is big. This is where I was talking about Newt Gingrich. If someone puts in $100 million, what are they trying to do? Get impact? Uh, influence? Are they trying to get an appointment just in case? Or A great subsidy for television and newspapers. <laughs> And I don't think it's particularly effective. I just don't. I mean, it's the negative ads. Uh, someone is calling it the Death Star of politics, where it blows everything up in your path. And I think that's a good way to put it. Okay. One last question before we leave, Mark. What are people in Italy? How do people over there perceive all this? Do they see it as a chaos, or is it just the U.S. doing business as usual? Uh, they see it as chaos. But Italy's got some really big problems uh, in most of the country. Unemployment among youth is very, very high, close to 40, like Indian reservations, 40 to 50 percent. The austerity measures that the rest of Europe is forcing on uh, southern states like Italy are severe, and uh, it's starting to be a big topic of conversation. Italy and the bailout of Greece, uh, the austerity issues over there. And uh, Spain, Italy, I mean, it's across the board. Oh, it's interesting. Well, Mark, uh, we'll touch base with you hopefully maybe in another week or two and see how you're coming along in terms of writing that book with that beautiful view that you're showing people outside of your uh, your loft or whatever it is. Are you up in a loft it's somewhere? A little part? It's a little villa. Okay, well, you know. <laughs> Show people the photos. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had a chance to try some of that Tuscany wine out yet? Oh, everything is just marvelous here. Everything. It's beautiful. We'll talk to you again soon, Mark. We appreciate Thank your you. time. And are you posting anything at your blog here for the next couple of weeks? Or yada, you're dark. Yeah, just working, except for poems. Well, we'll look for that. That's still on Twitter, right? And we're in right. the Twitter account is News Rhymes Four Lines. Take care, Mark. And that is another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. Thanks for joining with us and come back again soon.